All right, today what we're going to take a look at is how we can use a uh, continuity device like the Dato Appliance to provide a redundancy for the Shortel HQ or now Mitel Connect HQ. Um, and what we'll take a look here is here's an overview of the diagram. So what I have right now is I got a virtual virtual server VM host that's got an HQ server and a virtual IP switch and they're both um, on the 20 network. So my HQ is 192.168.20.225 my virtual IP server or I switch is on 20.200 and my client which will be videoing right now is 20.195 now the key thing here is I want to make sure that my DNS is pointed to demohq.lantelligence.com which is this IP address because when we fail over we're just going to update the DNS so that it points to this which is 192.168.4.55 so what we're going to try to accomplish today is we're going to take an existing snapshot and spin it up on 4.0 and 4.55 and get the Shortel HQ to recognize it, my clients to work and my switches to work and everything to come into play. All right, the first thing we're gonna look at is our VM. So we're gonna log into um, vSphere and wait for that to come up. We'll see that this is the server Win2K12, and you can see this is a IP address of 20.255. So what we'll do is we'll just open a console session here. Okay, and we're going to go check out what's going on here with Director. So we're going to fire up director. And you see that the name of the machine is Demo HQ. It's going to log in. So we want to log in and I'll show you what where we add these this information. Okay, so this is just a lab system. And I'm going to go under configuration, appliance and servers, platform equipment and then I'm gonna to go to my headquarters. Now the key thing here is the secondary IP address of the server that I'm going to spin up, which is 4.55, and also the fully qualified domain name. Now this becomes important in your certificates, the, so that you've got your common name or your CN is demo.hk.lantels.com, which is the actual FQDN, and also resolves in your DNS, because this is gonna be certificate-based and DNS-based. Okay, we take a look at the connectivity here. You'll see that we've got our virtual IP phone switch connected to our headquarters switch. And if we take a look at the phones, I've got one phone connected. And there it is. 20.148. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna minimize this and I'm gonna show you my connect client. So I go into my configuration, into my settings. You'll see that we're referencing a fully qualified domain name, demohq.lentels.com. And there's gonna be no changes to that. Okay, so just to check, I've got a voicemail message. There's actually two voicemail messages here. I've got a new one, which won't show up um, because my last restore, or my last snapshot didn't have this because I just added it. So we'll expect it to, to be fairly close to this, but it won't be up to date. The only way I could make sure all my voicemails translate is if I run a, a snapshot right now and initiate that. So I'm just going to go in and I've got my phone here and I can log in a voicemail. You hear it in the background. Welcome to the short house on So now we're all logged in. I've got a working client and I've got a working phone. So now what we'll do is we'll go into our console session here and I'm just going to go in and go into my vSphere and I'm going to shut this down so we should see this is disconnected so if I minimize this you're going to see that eventually my connect director my connect client is going to time out saying server not available 
And what I'll do here is I'll bring up a command prompt so we can take a look. CMD. And I'm going to go in here and say ping 192.168.20.225. Not responding. And also an NS lookup of demo hq.lintelligence.com and you see that it's still resolving at 20.225 so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to log into my DNS and I'm going to change that pointer so give me one second all right so I've logged into my DNS server and you can see that I'm unable to connect to the servers here uh, and I'm going to go and do my NS lookup again and what I should see is that it's pointing to the new server so let's say demo hq.lintelligence.com and it's now pointing to four. Now it's pointing to 4.55. Now it's still not going to work because technically I don't have that server spun up. So let's go and spin up that server right now. All right. So what we've done now is we've actually taken this device offline, so it's no longer online. So we're now going to go check and bring up the 4.55. All right. In the Dato portal I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to say I'm going to start this VM and this is a restored version from 12 o'clock yesterday I'm going to start this VM now I already know that this is actually going to start in probably be a 4.55 because I had that configured for 4.55 because part of the pre-work here is you have to go in and, and basically configure a snapshot set it to the right IP addresses so that you can fail over to it all right, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to ping 192.168.455. All right, and I'm also going to ping demohq.lintelligence.com. Oops. It hasn't updated yet. So. And there we go, 4.55. All right, so that's responding. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remote into 4.55 using MSTSC or terminal services. And I'm going to go 192.168.4.55. Now I do know that now that it's virtualized and connect, a lot of the services take a while to start. So it usually takes a couple minutes. And a lot of times you have some delayed services they're on delayed start. So let me just make this full window. All right, and let's just check here. I'm gonna go into my registry and I'm gonna make sure that my registry is showing 4.55, which it does. Okay. And all my services, I can check to see if my services have started. And the short tail services. And you can see that a couple haven't started yet. So the diagnostics and monitoring on delay start, event service, smart uh, event service, trunk test is disabled, and I think that is it. And the monitoring service. So we can hit refresh, but it will take a minute or two, so I'll just pause it till they've started. All right, so you can see now that all the services are running. The only thing is the trunk test service, but what I'll do is I'm gonna actually bring this down and I'm gonna start short term short tail director and again I'm using the DNS entry which is demo HQ and I'm going to log in now, as you can see it's 4.55 and now I'm getting a copy of my server that was from yesterday so if I go into connectivity you're gonna see that my two switches are connected I go into appliances you'll see that I've got the appliances connected and if I go into configuration you'll see that it has the same configuration for the secondary IP address which is 4.55 in the FQDN okay so everything seems to be configured I can do is log into my phone right now and see if my phone works Welcome to the short house so the phone works and what we can also see is that the can, cannot connect the server has actually gone away and I'll just go back here and I'll take another look at the settings and we're still pointing to demohq.lintelligence.com all right so what we've been able to do is we've been able to and I'm going to use the communicator here and just see if I can log in a voicemail connect client sorry welcome to 
the short telephone system. Please enter your password followed by pound. All right, so we can do that. So we're just going to go back to what we we're looking at before is that we took down 20.255. The data appliance had a snapshot that we were it's doing incremental backups so that we can restore 4.55 and we used yesterday at noon I could have I could have run the um, the backup or the restore more sooner um, but what happens is I've actually got this now configured so this is now about 10 minutes almost 11 minutes in this video and I'm going to bring down the primary HQ server bring up the secondary server uh, in less than 10 minutes and if we take a look here last thing I'll show you is Remember when we actually started this off, I had two voicemails. If I go into my voicemail tab here, you can see I only have one because the snapshot I took was actually prior to me adding that second voicemail. So it is restored. It is a little, um, uh, it doesn't have the data from the last restore, but in, in that situation, what we would do is we'd go back into the data plan here and we'd actually have to restore it from a new and virtualize it in locally because it's actually being done on the local virtualization and we'd have to actually restore it to our latest snapshot to get the most accurate so um, that's basically using Dato to take its snapshot and its, its continuity service to provide redundancy for your HQ servers and I've actually brought it up on two different networks with two different IPs and um, that's it so if you are someone who's double take and had to struggle through the days with double take and um, all the issues which I certainly had to this is a, a much easier and faster way of doing it thanks and have a great day